Hey there, it's Christian from Seven Gaming Network, and I'm here with um, a, a little tactica on uh, on this chap, uh, Kylo Ren. Um, now, it's fair to say that um, many people uh, at this early point of uh, the game, uh, as when I'm posting this video, would say that he is um, a little a, li <laughs> a little average, um, and I think general opinion is that he's not very good. Uh, and, and I actually want to suggest otherwise. Uh, I think for our 13 points for our elite version of him, I think he's actually uh, really pretty good. Uh, and I'll go through some reasons as to as to why I think that. Um, uh, and also I'll talk about some little uh, tips, uh, little tricks if you like for using him. And then finally I'll point you in the direction of uh, a deck list that I think he seems to work really well in. So first of all, um, let's have a look at his actual die and see what sides we've got on there. Um, so we'll see that he has two straight up melee damage sides. Uh, now one of them uh, costs a resource, um, which is a bit of a negative for a two damage, um, but it's still nothing to sniff at. And then of course he has his one shield, fairly whatever, and one resource, and again that's fairly whatever. He then of course has his special. Now his special reads, choose an opponent's character, then look at a random card in that opponent's hand and deal damage to that character equal to the cost of the card that you just looked at. Um, okay, just as a heads up, uh, I'm going to talk more about that special uh, in a moment, but I think it's fair to say that it's essentially we we're going to regard it as a damage side. and. Then what we're looking at with Kylo's die is we're looking at three damage sides on there. Now of course only the one is straight up and it's for one point and those are the two they have conditions. The one is we need a resource, the other one is uh, something we don't have really much control over. We do have some and I'll talk about that but ultimately we still need to break this down as Kylo has three damage sides. Now that's not to be sniffed at, and that has to be looked at. That is a strength, no matter which way you look at it. 50% of the time you're going to roll the potential to dish your opponent some damage. Okay, and That's not going to happen from a shield, that's not going to happen from a resource, and it isn't going to happen from a blank, unless you just re-rolled it power of the dark side. So, those three damage sides, that's a good thing, and that's a big thing in his favour. Especially when we take into account the fact that you're getting those sides, uh, getting... Uh, potentially uh, two of them, for th well you're getting two for 13 points. That's a good solid deal for the amount of damage he can then put out. It's certainly commensurate with his 13 points. Um, so, in terms of uh, this special then, let's have a look at this in a little more detail. Um, I did a bit of research uh, before uh, coming to do this little video and I took the top six decks that were on um, SWDestinyDB.com uh, um, and after going through and crunching the numbers on how much the different cards cost in each of the decks uh, there were some really interesting results. Now the first one that I found really interesting was that we had um, it was a little over 80% of all the cards that were used in in decks, not just that's actual cards, so two copies thereof of many of those cards of course um, and it meant that 80% uh, just over 80% of those decks were consisting of cards of one resource or more. Now that's really helpful information because it means that if our opponent has got five cards in hand, if it's one of these most recent decks um, that people are generally playing with and they are fairly archetypal type decks, your pose, your blue control, a Jedi mill deck, uh, you know fairly standard uh, lists, then what we're looking at is one in five of those cards is going to be a zero. The rest of them are going to deal damage. So you've got an 80% chance of hitting damage is what I'm trying to say when you roll that special. Not only that, but what we really like, of course, is that this can be spiky. Like this special side can go off for a lot of damage. Um, and looking at the cards that cost two or more, it was very nearly 50% of cards in people's decks. Now that's really helpful information to know because if you tend to look at that special side and go oh well it feels like about 50 50 as to whether i'll do any damage or not well actually that's not true if you're playing any of the decks in the current meta 
which are actually much more likely to be something like uh, probably with a bit of margin for error somewhere between 70 and maybe 85 percent of times you're going to hit for one damage or more and 50 percent of the time we're going to do two damage or more when this dice goes off great i am going to take that um so that's special uh in terms of its damage output i think if you also did 100 games and you averaged it out how many times that special goes off how many times it did damage if you've averaged it out I think you can rely upon that being one point of damage normally when it goes off with the potential of course for it to really spike and do big damage if you're running elite Kylo and you do two dice it could really go well for you so um, uh, general tips to play with him don't expect him to bring fireworks to the table okay he's not a Han Solo he's not a Vader or a Grievous or something like that. What he is, is a cheap elite that's going to bring small amounts of quite consistent damage. Okay, Or other sides, we don't mind getting a resource, getting some shields. Shields in blue force are pretty nice because Night Sisters are around. So, don't expect fireworks on him. Generally, get a lightsaber on him, let him start dishing out some damage. Most people, when they're playing against Kylo, will focus on him. They'll try and take him down first, because they often think, well, he's pretty easy to take down. Okay, 11 hit points is nothing to sniff at, but he hasn't got a big defensive ability like, say, Count Dooku. I can take him down fairly quickly, and they often will focus on him. Hence, we stick some lightsabers on him. He'll get redeployed, that's fine. One of the things that you can do to help him tank better if he does start to get focused, focus attacks from your opponent, it, um, stick your control uh, abilities on him. So your force choke uh, and immobilize, they're brilliant cards. I'd be trying to get hold of those if you're going to play um, force villain and um, get those on him because they will allow him to tank that little bit longer. Generally, most of the time, you're going to roll Kylo pretty early in the turn. So the earlier you can get that force choke dice out or that immobilized die out, um, you're going to have that ability to counteract and neuter incoming damage onto him, and that's really important. If you do roll a special, a couple of things that you can do, straight away, as soon as you roll that special, try and look at your opponent's reaction. People can't help it. Uh, unless they're very, very good and getting used to playing against him, they will tend to look straight at the hand of cards, and unless they've got a poker face, they will react. And don't rely on it, but it can be helpful. But just bear in mind that that's where a bit of mind games can come in. And certainly if I was playing Kylo, I would be quite happy to, if I've got a hand of zeros and ones, sort of pull a bit of a face and, and make it out like I've got a, an expensive card in there. Oh, crumbs, I don't want it to hit that. And I really don't mind, actually, if that special goes off. Because... What happens when that special hits the table is if an opponent has got a bigger card in hand, you aren't doing anything, you've just rolled the die, but you've just created a big threat on the table. As many of you will know, creating threat in games like this that push your opponents into a corner, that reduce your opponent's options, that make them focus on something other than their game plan, their strategy, uh, is a really powerful effect. It's not to be underestimated. Um, you know, you look at Team Covenant and you know, Zach will always go on about that effect. Just being on a table that forces your opponent to do something even though you've done nothing is really, really powerful. So we don't want to um, make light of the fact that you roll that special, that can change your opponent's game plan. If they've got, let's say, a one, a one, a two and a four in hand well they might not really wanted to play that four cost card out but can they really now afford not to if they've got the four resources or whatever it costs to get this uh, of course it costs four <laughs> um, if they've got the four resources to get that four out or that five for the five or six for the ATST or whatever um, if they're going to get that card out they've got to play it now because they don't really want to res risk you resolving this and then hit him for that big, large amount of damage. So it's an effect that's going to push your opponent. So see what they're doing. Do they start thinking, uh, I'm going to st 
I need to get resources uh, in case he pops this. I might need to try and get this played quickly out of my hand. Or you may find that it may make them actually just discard that card to re-roll their dice. Now again you say, ah, oh, so that's just new to his... Not at all. You've just made your opponent discard a potentially really powerful card um, so that they don't get hit by this. Now it's not available for them to use and to play in their deck. Great. That's the kind of control that we're talking about with, with um, Force Villain. And I love that. It's very thematic and it's, and it's brilliant. Also added to that, uh, as we're playing Force Villain, if you've got discard effects on the table, um, that is almost going to force your opponent into doing exactly that. They're probably going to... Well, okay. I'm either going to play this card because I've got the resources and I need to get rid of it for Kylo's ability, or they've got a discard there. I can't, I cannot risk losing this. I'm going to have to play this now. It's extra push into them playing it. Um, now, of course, if it's a card they really don't want to lose, like they're they're desperate to hold on to it. It's their own mind probe, for instance. They're just in this awful situation. You could resolve the discard. They could lose it. You could blow up uh, Kylo special. Uh, you can see the pressure that this is creating. Great fun to play with, uh, horrible to play against, as it should be if you're playing against Force Villain. Now then, um, uh, Force Villain, you can get quite a bit of focus in available as well, of course. Um, and you know, Kylo is someone that could absolutely pair up with something like um, uh, perhaps a, a Jabba die. You know, um, uh, there's plenty of ways in which we can get focus, and focusing onto that special is a, a very viable tactic, especially if you've got any way of looking at your opponent's hand of cards. Uh, another little thing about Carlos special, it is his defining feature, is even if you don't hit for any damage with that thing, a really important trick that you can use it for is where well, you just you're just going to look at the opponent's hand. It's getting information. That's really important. If you can see a zero that they now have in hand, uh, that can um, impact information um, or choices that you make later on in the turn, in the round. You see that they don't discard it at the end of the round. You know they've got that in hand, ready for it. It's information, and information is super valuable. Okay, so, um, many people when they play Kylo stick a mind probe on him. That's great, but try and be clever with it. If they're focusing on Kylo, I would say you need to make sure you get your immobilize on him or your force choke on him or something that's going to defend him better and stick mind probe on another character to try and draw the attention away from him. Um, this is a little bit of standard how to play upgrades, but many of you will be playing this and fairly new to how to play Star Wars uh, Destiny. So um, that's why I think this is important. Um, and if you're going to use that mind probe on him, Make sure it's almost to maybe draw attention to him, because often people will start to focus where that mind probe goes, uh, and most of us will be playing mind probes with Kylo. So that can be a, an important way to draw your opponent's attention, and maybe keep him alive for longer. Don't play that mind probe on him when he's only got five health left. Stick it on somebody else. Okay, so to finish with, I just want to point, point you towards um, a, a possible deck list that you could be using him in. Uh, I've actually created a deck list uh, called Sister Sledge, which has been doing surprisingly well. It's a mono blue uh, Sith control deck, so it's a great theme, really fun to play with. Um, uh, and I'll post that up here. Uh, and I've actually done a whole video for that deck, um, going through why Kylo's in it, why he's paired with two Night Sisters, and all the different cards that are in there. So it's a great fun deck and really, um, and really quite competitive, really quite powerful as well and it's pretty cheap to put together. So have a look at that one and see if that floats your boat. So overall, Kylo, he's not as bad as they say he is. Who knows, maybe we'll find out more about that in episode eight. We'll see. Anyway, enjoy playing with Kylo. He's a good one.